Welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be a fun webinar. Um, let's go ahead and give people another minute or two to jump in and we'll start promptly uh, about a, in about a minute. We'll get this thing going. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin again. Again, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is a busy time of year, and uh, we're glad we could get you on. Um, so so we're, uh, we're going to uh, introduce Haley and Jordan in a second. Before we do, I want to give you a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, um, if you look on the, the right-hand side of your screen as we use GoToWebinar for this broadcast, you'll see that there is a, a control panel, and there are a bunch of little gray bars. On the left of the gray bars, you'll see a triangle. You can hit that triangle and it will expand that specific section. The two I wanted you to, to really focus on is I just, uh, just started a chat for everybody so we can get in and we can do some chat if you guys want. Um, we also have one for questions. So we'll be getting to as many questions as we can at the end of this broadcast. Feel free to submit your questions uh, in there as we go. We should have a lot because we're talking about word of mouth at uh, that unicorn we all chase in the dealership and we all want to get uh, a little bit more information on. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be uh, sending this broadcast out to everyone who registered for the webinar, as well as um, uh, we'll put this on the community so that you can access it on drivingsales.com as well. So without further ado, let me introduce Haley and Jordan. I'm going to let you guys take over um, and drive. I want to get as much of this content as we can. Um, and so, yeah, take it over, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bart. We're really excited to be here today to talk about this webinar. We'll just introduce ourselves really quick. My name is Haley Sontag. I'm a marketing manager here at Podium, Podium and I'm joined by Jordan Reed. He is director of auto. He's our expert in that industry, in that field. So we're really excited to have him and his experiences on the webinar with us today. So just a quick agenda we're going to be talking about obviously how to win customers and influence word of mouth and we'll first talk a little bit about why word of mouth matter matters and kind of the theory behind it but then we want to get down to some techniques including real world examples that you can employ at your dealership today and you'll notice too that we have examples from many different industries they're not all auto specific so hopefully you'll get some new ideas that maybe you hadn't thought of before that other industries are doing that you can incorporate into your dealership as well so without further ado we'll we'll get started all right well yeah i'm happy to be here today um this is a great subject we'll just jump right into it uh we re Look, if you look at your own personal life, we love to talk about the things we love, right? So whether that's our, you know, our favorite sports team or this great new place we have to eat, um, you know, we can't seem to help ourselves when when we love something or when it it's something that we want others to know about. Uh, and it's totally natural. It, if you look at it, if you think about it, it's almost effortless, right? Uh, so it doesn't feel like an advertisement if you're telling others about it, or um, you know, it feels really more like we're just trying to help someone out. You want them to experience what you did. Um, so it's our way of relating to one another, and, and it's really one of the ways we build commonality. Um, so anyone with a local business knows this instinctively, but really you live, and buy, you live and die by the word of mouth, right? So a recent study found that a staggering 
of purchases are influenced by word of mouth. And uh, McKinsey, they stated actually that uh, as great as or as much as 50% of all purchases are directly caused by word of mouth, which I'd imagine most of you are already very, you know, cognizant of. And while we live in a, you know, a world where, you know, it's a digital age, we can easily start to think of word of mouth in digital terms, such as social reviews. So the reality is that, that really most word of mouth is still very much analog. Um, so Andy Cernovitz, he literally wrote the book, uh, you know, called Word of Mouth Marketing. He says that still today, only 20% of word of mouth happens, it, it is really happening online. So the other, about 80%, is still happening offline, which is pretty fascinating. So as much time as we spend interacting with others online, it really still pales in comparison to our live interactions with others. Um, in fact, so the average working adult has 27 conversations per, per day, lasting about 10 minutes each, compiling of about 5,000 to 7,000 words. If you really break it down like that, it's pretty incredible. Um, it's it's within the thick and thin of these interactions that the word of mouth really weaves itself almost you know imperceptibly into a tapestry that that really shapes the way we engage the world. So in short, word of mouth is really how we get customers. At the end of the day, right? While while we have you know fancy dashboards stating that the source or stating the source of the referral, right, might be X, Y, or Z. That's really not the source. Those are just the channels. Uh, that the customer is using to reach out. So before that, your potential customer most likely heard about you from someone else. So word of mouth really is the source. Someone talked spontaneously. Um, and how do we get people to talk spontaneously about your business like this? And the answer, it really is surprisingly simple, yet profound. It's be remarkable. It was Seth Gooden that popularized the notion of being remarkable. He's written about it many times on his blog and in his book called Purple Cow. And that, you know, two, that title is an efficient two-word literary shortcut that describes the essence of what drives word of mouth. If you want to get people talking about you, you must be remarkable. But what does that even mean? By definition, being remarkable means that you're, what you're doing is worthy of remark. It's worth talking about. Let that sink in. Seriously, this idea alone can change your business. It's so simple, this concept. You know, if you're doing something remarkable, by very definition, people will talk. If not, people won't. We are efficient beings. We don't have time to remark on things that are average or expected, something that we joke about here in the office, office is that people don't go up to a friend and excitedly tell them, oh, that sandwich tasted exactly like I expected and it would and the way it always does. Or they don't say that the bank teller was able to withdraw money from my account and hand it to me. Or the product was delivered on time. It just doesn't happen. Even if our experience was good or adequate and it, it measured up to our expectations, we don't take the time to remark on these sorts of things. Life is too short. It's only when something is truly remarkable that we take the time to talk about it. And it seems that once we start talking, we can't stop. So look, there, there's many ways a business could be remarkable. We all, I mean, there's a ton of different options, product quality, design, uh, you know, speed of delivery, personality, even humor and cost, right? But uh, you know, I guess this is a very broad topic, and that being the case, we really want to focus on, you know, one of the quickest and easiest things to change that really has the greatest impact. So we're going to focus on the efficiency efficiency here, which is the customer experience. Um, so, look, as far as remarkable experiences, look, we've all had them. They, they seem to come out of the blue. We're, you know, we're taken by surprise. We wake from our, our normal, you know, sometimes boring days and routines. Um, and, and we see something different that actually makes us feel like we want to keep going back. So you think about your last remarkable you know, customer experience. What was the result? I, I'd imagine you told friends about it or someone, right? Did you write a review? You know, ask yourself, did, did you increase patronage to that business? Did you keep going back? You know, how many people do you think this influenced? Uh, remember the first time someone, for example, at a restaurant remembered your name, right? Right then and there. 
you're like, all right, I like this place, right? Did, did they ask you if you wanted the usual? Makes you feel comfortable. So how many times have you gone back there? How about that time you called, you know, a retailer expecting to get a pre-recorded message and someone picks up and asks, hey, how can I help you? And then they did, right? You almost don't know what to say in a situation like that. So before we take a deeper look into what's remarkable overall here, it's helpful to know what remarkable isn't. We all have our, our ideas, right? But uh, let's set some boundaries around the topic. So Seth Godin would tell you that this isn't really being, this isn't just being noticed. Um, you know, this, this dog here wearing the pink cowboy hat will get you noticed, but it won't because others, or it won't cause others, I should say, to, to remark. So in today's world, there, there's really plenty of odd and strange things designed to catch our eye. Um, and, and so while these things may be successful in getting a small percentage of our attention, I think, you know, they rarely achieve remarkable status. Uh, look, being remarkable isn't just being different. In some ways, every business is different from its competition. Uh, the, the difference between, you know, Coke and Pepsi, right? The, the Toyota Prius is different from the Honda Insight. Being different really is just that. It's different. Uh, it doesn't make your business remarkable unless those differences really lead people to talking. Now, we want to pause for a second and, and put in a little word of caution. You want to be careful because this door swings both ways. But it's also worth noting that you don't get to decide what people talk about. And if you're remarkable, they'll talk. If not, they won't. However, this if you're terribly remarkable, they'll talk more. People are twice as likely to talk about a bad customer experience than a good one. But we know that if you're attending this webinar, a terribly remarkable experience is not your, or terribly horrible, excuse me, remarkably terrible, that's the word I'm looking for. A remarkably terrible customer experience isn't a problem that you're dealing with, so we'll, we'll just move on. And what, but what would happen, imagine, if all of your customers turned full-blown evangelist mode and they told everyone that they came in contact with about the remarkable business they, or remarkable experience they had at your dealership? They told everyone about the great service, about the awesome sales rep they were talking to, about the great car, whatever it is. They're going and telling everyone they know about their great experience. That would be a game changer, right? You would probably need to quickly take the focus off how to get more customers and try to figure out how to handle the customers that seem to be flooding your front door and onto your website. And that's a problem we all dream to have the luxury of solving too many customers. But let's stop talking theory and get into practice. We're going to review some common plays um, in our Be Remarkable free playbook on our website, and we're going to bring them here. And along the way, we'll share some stories of businesses that have been remarkable. So number one is listen closely. Consider this, you may be already doing something remarkable and you don't even know it. So before you go crazy with brainstorming meetings and filling spreadsheets of ideas of how to be remarkable and you get the whole company together thinking of all these different ideas, you might want to stop to listen closely to what your customers are already saying about you. If you're already doing something remarkable, chances are that your customers are pointing it out. Reviews are an obvious place to look. Yes, you have to read them, and yes, it's good for you. And don't just look at the positive ones. This might be a chance to right some wrongs, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but it's a fruitful exercise that you should do regularly because it helps you see the forest for the trees. Oftentimes, it can get so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day, -day and it becomes hard to spot patterns in your customer's journey, but they're not having this problem. And another place to listen is new customers. What are they asking for when they first walk in your doors or they first chat into your business? What do they expect? If your business lives on referrals for new, for new customers, which is a lot of businesses, this is a necessary place to look because everyone who walks through your door has been coached by a customer that has come to your door previously. So what did that repeat customer or previous customer tell this new customer that got them in the door. You know, they already have an idea of what makes you remarkable and your job is to lure it out of them. Gather feedback from your new and repeat customers either directly or indirectly to find out what attracted them to your business. 
Number two is look beyond the obvious. What is remarkable about you may or may not have anything to do with your core product or offering. It may have nothing to do with the, the cars that you sell. In fact, it's usually easier to make how the product is delivered remarkable than it is to make what is actually being delivered remarkable. Here we have a fun example. A long-term cook at Red Lobster noticed that every time he mentioned or told someone that he worked at Red Lobster, a very similar, almost predictable answer would come back. And you might expect this to be something about lobster or maybe endless shrimp or at least something about seafood, right? But that wasn't the case. Anyone who'd ever been to the restaurant would almost always say, oh, I love those garlic cheese biscuits. Those who don't have a seafood lover inside them might be surprised to hear that these biscuits, which are called the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, aren't even on the menu. They're free. The server brings a basket of them to the table with the salad and then will often refill the basket once they're gone. The servers are trained to bring one biscuit for each person at the table and then one extra to spark conversation, to get people talking. Is that sounding familiar? So did the you know, big corporate chefs and the, the big wigs at that corporate Red Lobster create these biscuits knowing that someday this free item would be more popular than the seafood itself? Well, probably not. But one thing for sure, their current billboards suggest that they've since figured it out. So number three here, we want to shatter expectations. I'm sure you all have some ideas now hearing that example from Red Lobster of, of how you guys can do that. It's important to state first that expectations really are relative. Uh, you know, a fast food restaurant, it doesn't have the same expectations as maybe a, uh, you know, Michelin star French restaurant. Uh, and because of expectations, the, fr the French restaurant might have to go so far as to keep track uh, of your last visit. So they can maybe pour you a glass of wine the next time you come in and, and put that on the house, right? Um, at the same time, a Taco Bell, for example, might, you know, be able to score a slew of five-star reviews just by teaching their employees to actually look at a customer in the eyes and say, hey, in, in a cheerful tone. So expectations really are everything when it comes to customer experience. You know, if we've come to expect waiting, well, we'll wait without complaining. If, we've, if we expect an automated phone system, well, we're going to tap our way through it, right? Most of us are amazingly adaptable as customers, and that's something we need to remember. We're just looking to get through the busy day with the least hassle possible. Uh, so develop a new set of eyes when you're looking for ways to make your customer experiences more remarkable. Look very closely at the entire customer experience. Break it down. Don't look past the mundane or the ordinary things that we just take for granted, but those might be exactly the places that, that you could be remarkable. Uh, so look for points of friction or boredom. Uh, if a customer is already expecting friction or boredom, well, then they're a perfect target. It's often much easier to shatter their expectations if they're already very low. Uh, what, for example, could a gas station do to shatter expectations? Upon first sight, this Beaver Valley Chevron off of the exit 109 on I-15 in, in Beaver, Utah, doesn't look like much. In fact, it looks like your average 20-year-old gas station, right? It's a perfect model, though, in shattering expectations. So what they do is so simple that we're really not sure why every gas station hasn't figured this out yet. Uh, so first, quick quiz question. Where do, where, do, where do gas stations make most of their profit? Um, if you said in the store, you're right. Obviously, gas doesn't do much, right? In the store, where, uh, where the high margin items are, everybody knows that's where they make their money. So follow-up question. Why are gas stations letting their customers stand at the pumps for several minutes performing a mundane task when they could really be in the store instead? So that's what the good folks at Beaver Valley Chevron wondered as well. So they decided to turn the clock back to the 50s and become a full service gas station. So when you pull up to the station, a nice guy with a name tag on will come out and meet you at the car. And, uh, and he says, hey, I'll pump it up for you. How much do you want? After you swipe your car, he not only pumps your gas, but also washes your windows uh, as you stroll around in the store, only to find they have a, a DQ, which seems to always sound good no matter what time of the day, right? So outside the small service they offer, the Beaver Valley Chevron is the definition of average with an older looking facade and a small store when compared to some of the newer you know, mega stop stations that you see. Nonetheless, they really do have quite the following amongst travelers 
through this sparsely populated area. Uh, in fact, if you're traveling through there, it's sort of expected that you've got to stop. So while we can't confirm exactly how well this gas station is doing financially, their 439 4.5 star review average compared to the station across the street, which has 44 reviews, it really does say something. Also, social media is really littered with pictures of people taking uh, selfies with these guys at Beaver Valley Chevron. And, and all these things are just them being remarkable, right? So, uh, and, and if you can see, yes, that's Steve Young. Number four here is defy the, the laws of speed and time. The old adage goes, you know, time is money. We all know that dealerships, you're all very busy. If you could make things more efficient and use your time you know, to do as many things as possible, it would be awesome. If there were just five of me, I think that I would be able to get a lot done. Time is money. And another way to be remarkable and add more value to your offering is to do things faster than expected. We mean like way faster. The Cleveland Clinic is a remarkable healthcare system in Cleveland, Ohio. They have some of the top doctors in the world and they attract patients from all 50 states and about 180 countries. The main 165 acre main campus is basically like unto a city itself with 42 buildings. They employ 52,000 employees and treat over 7 million patients per year. But would you believe that these things aren't even the most remarkable thing about the Cleveland Clinic? Get this, when you call their main number, a person, a real person answers the phone and says, thank you for calling the Cleveland Clinic. Can I set an appointment for you today? Most people don't know what to think today. If you try to set an appointment for next week, depending on the specialty, they'll tell you they're booked out for several months, but you can get in today. And as you can imagine, a hospital system like this doesn't really need to work very hard to find new patients. They could probably rest on their laurels if they wanted to, but they haven't. They have optimized their entire system around same day appointments. If you call before noon, you'll get an appointment that day. If you call later, they'll set you up for tomorrow. And once you're in, get ready for something even more remarkable. If you need lab work or scans, they'll also schedule those for you that same day. And you'll sit down with your doctor and go over the results the same day. And if you need surgery, well, you guessed it, it'll usually happen today. You don't leave until you have answers, treatment, and a course of action. And they're, they're optimized to make all of this happen today. How does this compare to your local healthcare system? I know it's different from ours. Yeah, so we've been speaking about some, you know, other industries and some general things as well that are very helpful. But now let's let's talk a little, you know, specifics for you. Um, number five here, get out of the showroom. So over the last few years, if you think about your own life, there's really been a shift in the way we live our lives, right? So technologies such as the smartphone, Internet, apps, look, they've all been around for years, but it hasn't been until recently that there's really been a tipping point uh, in, in you know, our expectations as a consumer. So technology has really enabled us to live our lives, you know, in between. In other words, we, you know, think about it. We can order something from Amazon in between meetings at work. We can set up an appointment uh, to have a glass chip in our car repaired in between the gym and, and picking up the kids. Now, we can get our teeth straightened without ever seeing an orthodontist or leaving our home. Every day, more and more, we're able to take care of our business while really taking care of our business all around. Uh, so savvy companies have recognized this shift. I would ask you guys this, have you guys recognized it? They've realized that we really no longer want to visit the showroom. We no longer want to get chased down by a salesperson while we're still browsing. We don't want to wait in the line. We don't want the showroom to come to us, or we do want the showroom to come to us. We want to set the terms. Um, you know, we want to engage when we're ready to engage and not when the salesperson is ready to engage us. The showroom has moved into the living room, and I'm sure you've all seen this. And while the world is still catching up, businesses that adapt have the opportunity to really be remarkable. So over the last 50 years, Van Horn Automotive Group, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, has successfully grown from one car dealership in Plymouth, Wisconsin, to 15 dealerships across Wisconsin and Iowa, Iowa with another one on the way. Uh, so five of these dealerships have opened in the last two years alone. Uh, so Tina, who's in charge of solving the communication challenges that arise with fast growth, uh, and, and the growth they've experienced at Van Horn, 
Uh, she said in a recent interview, we've always, we're, we're always trying to make sure that all of our customers have the exact same experience, regardless of what dealership they're dealing with. So she uses Podium and a handful of other tools to manage the chaos and provide, you know, a really consistent experience across the brands. Um, as, as customers' needs have shifted and shopping behaviors have changed, Van Horn has really had to be innovative in, in how they interact with customers. So Tina says, uh, one thing that's been huge for us is we've made all of our landline phone numbers textable in our dealerships. And it was just crazy after we did that. The amount of messages we didn't realize that we were getting from our customers. It's been a huge new source of communication for us. There's been a huge change even over the last 12 months or so uh, with the customer desire to text and chat instead of being on the phone or emailing. Again, something that maybe you guys have started to notice. There are trends there. Uh, because of the shift, shift in customer expectations, Van Horn has consolidated their internet sales department into one central hub. So that, that enables them to better train uh, you know, their individual employees on how to best interact uh, with a customer over text or chat. So with all these changes, Van Horn Automotive Group has only been able to uh, provide consistent experience across all stores. I should say they not only have been able to do that, but they've also been able to respond to new leads. Uh, from any resource or from any source in a really remarkable uh, 15 minutes or less, which is pretty crazy, especially in the we want it now economy that we live in. So if that's not remarkable enough, their next goal is to really figure out how to create a situation where a customer never needs to come to the showroom um, and the car is delivered directly to their garage. And that's that is what people expect. So one more example here um, as far as shattering expectations go. For most people, getting new tires is really a painful experience. We've all been there. So they can cost as much as you know, a high-end smartphone, but bring us so much less joy. Uh, in our mind, we imagine the experience of waiting in line, making a decision about things we don't really care to understand, and really waiting in, in the waiting room you know, usually isn't, uh, or usually full of worn out chairs with the TV blaring the news, and uh, you know, all the other things you experience, like cheap coffee and, and uh, you know, old rubber and, and things like that. So on top of this, we know the expedition will take a big chunk of our day. So Jack Williams Tire, even though they're a 90 year old tire shop, they have 36 retail locations in Pennsylvania and they thought they wanted to make some things different. So it's not like most 90 year olds to try something new, but Jack Williams Tire is trying to bring new show or trying to bring the showroom uh, to the customer with their remarkable new mobile tire shop. So for a small fee, around $10, uh, you can avoid the showrooms and get a set of rubber wherever you are. It only takes as long as handing your keys to the technician. Anthony Lucy, Lucci is the marketing director of Jack Williams Tire. He says not everyone out there loves shelling out money for tires, but it's a necessity in order to stay safe and not have a blown out tire on the road. So he adds people are always short on time. And whether it's a soccer mom and they're you know, juggling kids' schedules, or a business professional, professional uh, going in different, into different meetings. We just wanna try and make it easier for the customer to get the things done that need to be done. So look, the, the beauty of this innovation is the remarkability is built in. Uh, when you step out of the meeting at work to hand your keys off to the tire shop in the parking lot, every person is gonna want more. And like we said earlier on, that's where we talk. Too many businesses take kind of the foolish fisherman's approach to losing customers. They believe that if they lose a customer, it's no big deal because there are plenty of fish in the sea. Well, just like fish, customers over time wise up. And these businesses are often left, left wondering why customers don't come around like they used to. And this probably isn't surprising, but a whopping 91% of unhappy customers won't do business with that company ever again. And according to the White House Office of Consumer Affairs, those customers will typically tell nine to 15 people. So one negative experience not only makes you lose that customer, but they've also told nine to 15 people about that experience. Now, how would your business fare if these stats hold true? Most businesses, most dealerships can't afford this type of negative headwind. Budget Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing is their full-service uh, HVAC company that services the St. Louis area. 
And really up until a few years ago, they didn't really know what to do with negative reviews. And of course, they were disappointed to get them because they tried to always take care of their customers, but they kind of just ignored them. And it wasn't until Tyler came on board as the director of marketing. With a strong belief in the power of reviews, he decided that something needed to be done to help people who were having bad experiences and leaving negative reviews online. And he mentioned in a recent interview that managing your online reputation has become an absolute cornerstone to any service industry-based business. He went on to say that getting re reviews online is really, really tough. If somebody's angry, they're very willing to go online and say whatever they think needs to be said, but it's very hard to get a happy customer to do the same thing. The first problem Tyler faced was getting happy customers to leave reviews, and then the second was responding and working with those other customers that were leaving negative reviews. He knew from trial and error that clicks and seconds matter a lot to a customer trying to leave feedback. So he eliminated those barriers and that friction by sending review invitations via text, which most customers prefer. And finding a solution that sent customers almost directly to the exact spot they needed to be at to leave a review, eliminated those barriers, like we said, and got more happy customers to, to leave reviews. Because there, most people are willing to leave a review if you ask, but if you don't eliminate those barriers and basically do most of the work for them, they probably aren't going to. They may forget, they may get busy, whatever the reason is. Um, so Tyler at Budget Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing did most of the work for his customers and got more reviews. And the result is 11x more reviews per month and a 4% increase in the star rating. So Budget Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing it ha now has over 1,500 reviews. And as for the second problem of turning negative reviews positive, he decided to use an interaction management platform to help with that. And now he's able to receive all messages from every source into one dashboard so he can focus on doing the right thing for them and not focus on trying to find the reviews in all of the different places. And the results for that have also been, well, remarkable. So now he's able to respond quickly to customers who've had a bad experience with a specific response, you know, which shows those customers and also future customers who may be reading those reviews that his company cares about fixing an issue and providing a great experience. Okay, so number seven, pretty simple. Do what Amazon, Nordstrom, and Walmart can't. So this quote here is interesting. A speedboat is easier to turn than a cruise ship is. So look, what can we do, what can you do that Amazon can't? One is answer the flipping phone, right? Um, be personable. Number two, or B, shoot your back or shoot you back uh, a quick text to answer your question. C, hand curate only the best products in a category. D, let you talk to a human with personality, right? E, all of the above. Okay, so look, if you guessed E, all of the above, you're right. Amazon can do many amazing things with their revenue infrastructure, technology, all that. But really, there's several things that they'll never really be able to do that you guys can. So um, there, these are the reasons you'll be able to be remarkable in comparison. So McGee and Company, it's a fast-growing uh, home furnishings retailer and interior design company founded by Sid and Shea McGee in 2014. So due to the design genius of the founders, they've been experiencing 80% year-over-year growth and now have a destination storefront in Costa Mesa, California. The largest growth has been on their e-commerce site where all the items are hand curated by Shea, who's the creative director and co-founder of the company. So what's remarkable here is you know, the growth is, is what happened during a time when Amazon has focused on two day and even next day shipping, right? Uh, and, and did we mention you know, on McGee, on their site, nothing ships in less than three months or three weeks. So still, customers are willing to wait. Uh, Teresa Keck, the director of uh, customer experience, says that this is because all pieces are high-end and long-lasting. So one of the ways McGee and company has been able to achieve this growth is through remarkable responsiveness to their customers. Because of their large following on social media, many of their customers ask questions 
through Instagram and Facebook. So they've used an interaction management software to pull all of this together and, all, and, and also allow uh, their customers to text them. So Teresa says they want to make sure that they're always available to their customers. They know that when a customer has a question about an expensive piece of furniture, it's really important to answer those questions as soon as possible. Um, Teresa points out, our goal is to respond to our customers in four to seven minutes. So they even coach their employees on the tone to match how Shea uh, consults with her customers. So Teresa says, the strategy has been incredibly successful because, because it's really not what you'd expect. So when you reach out via social media because you have a question about something in particular you've, been, you've seen on a post, and that company actually answers you back within a couple of minutes, you're like, okay, wow, they, they, these are real people, or you know, this is a real brand, and they really do want to be in touch with me. Okay, this is the last tip that we have. We've already talked about how customers are expecting the showroom to come to them, but we want to take that idea even one step further. Some customers don't even want to talk to you unless it's wherever, whenever, and however they want it. To help emphasize this point, let's call back some of those friends we've already heard from. So Anthony from Jack Williams Tire says, a current trend is that people don't want to talk on the phone as much anymore. Brent from Valley Immediate Care says that you need to catch people wherever they are. Patients want to be met where they want to be met, when they want to be met, with whatever services they desire. And Tina, from Van Horn Automotive Group would add that you need to meet the customer where they want to be met. It sounds like these remarkable businesses are converging around the same idea. It's no longer on their terms. It's on ours as the customer. And anything you can do to meet the customer wherever, whenever, however, will be a step toward remarkability. So we've set a lot of different examples. We've had a lot of different tips that this this isn't really the end. This is just the beginning, well, at least for you. And hopefully these examples have given you some inspiration and, part, and sparked some ideas of how you could be remarkable and kickstart the word of mouth engine. And we wish you well on, on that journey. Since we began with a Bonnie and Will Ferrell quote, it, all, it seems only appropriate that we should also end with one. So let's give them something to talk about. That's everything that we have for today. We hope you learned something, even though some of the examples for, were from industries that maybe you're not used to hearing about. And we, we're grateful for everyone who joined us today on the call, taking time out of your day. And we'll turn it back over to Bart to see if we had any questions come in. Haley, uh, don't feel bad about those outside of, of the industry ones. I think those are awesome. I, what I loved about that is um, none of those were really sexy Silicon Valley companies doing crazy things. We had a plumber, a tire company, a hospital. Um, these are pretty much old school established uh, mature business uh, industries that were doing unique things. I, I think it's really interesting examples you brought up. Yeah, I mean, local you, businesses really have a huge advantage you know, over these sexy Silicon Slopes or Silicon Valley tech companies. So we hope we, we portrayed that. So, so can you, um, I, I, can you go back to the first one? I, I, I think what you've done um, is, is built something from beginning to end that really feels like it flows. Um, because always when, whenever I get this kind of insight, I want to know where do I, what do I do first? And it seems like a, a good place to start would be look at what your people are saying about you right now um, uh, in, in your reputation. Yeah, definitely. It can seem, I know we went through a lot of things. It can seem overwhelming, but I would definitely say that's the first step is to figure out what people are saying about you. Get feedback from the customers that buy from you. Get feedback from the customers that walk in the door, even if they don't purchase a car from you, just make sure you're listening to what customers are saying because they'll tell you what they think about you and, and you'll be able to go from there. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was going to ask you, um, as, as you kind of have gone through this a little bit, um, I, you know, when I was in retail, it was, it was a struggle to take 
you know, the mission statement that was chiseled on the wall and to be able to identify things that customers really valued and, and kind of build a marketing plan around that. And, and um, you know, it seems like that that would be a foundational part is what your customers, you know, the biscuits, right? What your customers feel you do better than anybody else would be maybe a good place to start. Definitely. So as you as you're going out and you're building this, um, is is the goal just to uh, create these overwhelming um, um, experiences and and then uh, your customers will talk about you, or or is there a step where you actually you have to ask them or invite them to do that, or is that is that part of it forced and and it, it takes away some of the some of the organic feel. Oh, I definitely think you can incorporate both aspects of that. You want to, of course, just provide a remarkable experience. So they talk spontaneously, but I don't think you need to shy away from, you know, asking them up front if they'll, if they'll leave you a review or if they have friends or family that they could refer you to. Most, you know, I know there's a stat that says something that 77% of people are willing to leave reviews if asked. Um, so kind of going back to what we were saying, you wanna make it really easy for them, whether it's the referral process or giving you feedback or leaving online reviews. But I think you definitely can incorporate that into your process. Maybe when they're waiting for financing, you take that opportunity while they're waiting to send them a review invitation or have them refer someone. I think you can definitely ask them and, and push that a little bit by or from your end and then also provide a great experience so they talk without being pushed as well yeah uh, one of the things that that caught my eye or captured my attention is um, we have this problem a lot in automotive where we have um, uh, dealership centric processes um, and I go and I think about the hospital example, um, and I don't know if it's just a, a load balancing issue, if it's a, they feel like that, if it takes time to get your results back, then that means um, they're busy or the perception is that, that they're important. But um, we have the same issue in dealerships as well. And, and what that Cleveland Hospital is doing is developing a customer centric process, um, I think is, is, a, is a great example of someone saying well, we don't just because we've always done it that way like you know why do we do that step and, and what does the customer think about it yeah for sure i'm sure it wasn't easy for them to implement a a strategy around same day appointments but they felt like that was going to be something that makes them remarkable and and they were right they implemented that and probably had to do a lot of training and change some things around but it's really worked in their favor and it, in the long run it's ended up being more convenient for them and for their customers as well that's a good point All right well well thank you uh jordan and and haley so much for this this was i i really enjoyed that we were looking outside of automotive and once again i i liked that that we were talking about some pretty old school businesses that have, have managed to do some remarkable things uh thanks a lot you guys thanks for having us Thanks everyone for joining. And uh, yeah, I was going to say the same. So thanks everyone. If, if we will have this available on drivingsales.com. We are also going to send out um, an, an email to anyone who registered. I know that it's it's kind of hard sometimes to get in front of a, a computer and actually pay attention uh, for a webinar when you're trying to you know to to conduct business. So um, we're going to make sure that this is available for you, so you can go back to maybe something you might have missed or or something you want a little bit more clarity on. Um, and so thank you for attending. Thanks, guys, for, for hosting this uh, or, for, or for giving us the content. And we hope to see everyone on future webinars. Take care.